So before we get into the calculations, let's talk about what a solution is. Well, quite simply, uh, a solution is a, it's a mixture. And generally, if we talk about two things that are being mixed together, we've got a solute and a solvent. So you've got the solute and a solvent together, they make a solution. So you mix a solute and a solvent together, solution. Uh, generally speaking, of course, you know, you, you think about it, you've got a solid that you might mix with a, a liquid, and that liquid generally being water to make an aqueous solution. Okay, so, but uh, you can mix two liquids together, right? And if you mix two liquids together, well, which one's the solute and the solvent? Well, the one that's in the greater amount is the solvent, and the one that's in the lesser amount is the solute. That's how we do it. And by the way, gases, you can put them into solution as well. They generally be the solute, right? So, um, some common terms uh, when defining solutions, well, dilute. Generally speaking, you know, if you have a solution, and we'll get into this calculation here when we talk about moles per liter, but about something like 0.1 moles per liter or less, you're talking about a solution that doesn't have a lot of solute compared to the solvent, so we call it dilute. Anything greater than that is a little more concentrated, and of course, we got solutions like, for instance, sulfuric acid around 17.1 moles per liter uh, in its concentrated form at room temperature. That would be, again, a concentrated solution. Dilute would be anything less than 0.1 moles per liter for something like, say, sulfuric acid. Saturated. All right. So, what if you've got a solution and you keep putting crystals in and you stir, 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 and it keeps dissolving? Well, you could probably say that that solution is unsaturated. Now you've got that solution and you're putting crystals in and you stir, 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 and you stir, 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 and you stir some more, and the crystals aren't dissolving. Well, what have you got there? You've most likely got now, at that certain temperature, a saturated solution. That solution's at equilibrium, where the rate of the crystals that are dissolving equals the rate of recrystallization. You know, at the macroscopic level, at the big view, it doesn't look like anything's happening. But at the microscopic level, yeah, you've got particles dissolving and returning into uh, solute, uh, uh, undissolved solute. So what you've got there is an equilibrium situation where the rate of forward reaction dissolving equals the rate of reverse reaction recrystallizing. Now, how do you make a supersaturated solution? Well, if you take that solution that's got crystals remaining on the bottom and you heat it up, now you might have a solution that becomes saturated at a higher temperature. But now cool it back down. The crystals, for lack of a better way to put it, don't know what they look like <laughs> uh, because they're all dissolved now. So they don't come out of solution when you cool it back down. They remain in solution, all scrunched up together in a solution that's beyond saturation. So it's super saturated. Now, how do you return them uh, to be able to recrystallize in solution? Well, you can add a little bit of a, a, a crystal uh, of their own kind, and then they'll just bond to that. Or you could actually scratch the side of the glass, and maybe you'll make a cut, a microscopic cut in the glass that absolutely matches the crystalline shape, and therefore they recrystallize in solution. Right. Okay, now those are just common terminology that you have to have under control for understanding solutions. Now how about factors that affect solubility? Well, solubility is really just the, uh, well, it's the ability of a chemical to be able to dissolve, and it's also a point at which uh, we call it the molar solubility, where you can't dissolve any more solute into a solvent at a given temperature. Well, what affects those types of, uh, uh, what affects solubility? Okay. Well, like dissolves like. What that means is, and, and um, when you talk about chemical bonding, and when we talk about it later, and you just got to access uh, later videos on chemical bonding, you'll understand what polar and nonpolar means. Well, here's the thing. A polar substance and a nonpolar substance, they don't mix together very well at all. As a matter of fact, at all. So we say that they are immiscible with one another. Immiscible. But miscible chemicals, like for instance, polar chemicals that are both liquids, well, they'll dissolve into each other, like alcohol and water, in any proportion whatsoever. And so that is uh, polar and polar dissolving together, nonpolar and nonpolar. Well, like, like gasoline and oil, they'll mix together and they're both nonpolar. Like dissolves like. Ionic compounds and polar compounds dissolve in water. They're alike. But nonpolar chemicals and nonpolar chemicals, well, they'll dissolve together, like I just said, oil and gasoline. Polar and nonpolar don't mix. Nonpolar and polar don't mix. So those solutions are said to be immiscible. Like dissolves like. Determines whether or not you're going to be able to make a solution. Uh, temperature. Generally speaking, if you take an ionic crystal and put it into solution, if you heat it up, you'll be able to dissolve more. But if the reaction actually produces heat and is exothermic, 
it becomes a little bit more difficult to be able to heat up a solution that's already producing a lot of heat and be able to dissolve more crystals. So generally, endothermic reactions, oh, they respond really well to adding heat to increase the solubility. But exothermic reactions don't respond very well at all to increasing heat. Pressure. That applies only to gases. So what can you do to be able to dissolve more gas into a given amount of solvent? Well, quite simply, you can pressurize it. So instead of like blowing into water to put carbon dioxide into it, blow through a straw, increase the pressure, and you'll be able to dissolve more. Also, you'll be able to dissolve more gas into solvent when the solvent is cooler. Not warmer, but cooler. You see, because if you think about molecules bouncing around together, if you put a, a, a gas into a warm solvent where the molecules are bouncing around a lot, well, they'll squeeze out the gas real quick and the gas won't dissolve very well, but slower molecules be able to put in more gas and therefore when the solvent is colder, you'll be able to dissolve more solute.